Hello, everybody, and welcome to the March 2021 session of the Evado webinars. My name is Fabien Perrineau. I am an Industrial Partnership Advisor at Evado, and today I will be your host and moderator. So before we start, just a couple of housekeeping rules. Uh, the microphones and cameras of all attendees will be turned off for the whole duration of the webinar. However, should you have any questions to ask the speakers, you can use the Q&A button to type in your questions or use the chat for those on you, or for those of you following us on YouTube Live. Questions will be addressed during the Q&A session, which will take place right after the presentation. And this uh, webinar will be recorded and uh, made, made available afterwards. So today we will have an insight in the practical planning process and analytics tools to support the planners in getting more precise and dynamic routing of ocean going vessels. The need for optimized routing has gained the relevance in the age of jet arrivals, fluctuating fuel costs and tightening emission standards. True North Marine is working together with the Université Laval, HEC Montréal and the Université du Québec at Trois-Rivières in a project funded by Ivalo, Prompt and MyTax to develop these advanced analytics tools to support route planning. So we will see how they allow the analysis of many routes in order to determine the optimal speed fuel consumption settings and the best route option based on many variables, such as forecast weather data, historical weather data, vessel characteristics, as well as data obtained from monitoring past performance of vessels. So today we have the pleasure to welcome two speakers, Gurjit Waria and Mikael Rungvist. Gurjit is the VP of Business Development and Operations at True North Marine a Montreal-based comp consulting company offering services on route selection and analysis to ocean-going vessels, operators, and owners. Gurjit is an ex-captain who worked 14, for 17 years on ocean-going vessels. With the first and experience of various ship operations, he was involved in road planning, execution of voyages, and port turnover. He witnessed various inefficiencies and understood the, the need for more co coherent ship show collaboration as the key to achieving higher efficiencies for voyages. Over the last few years, Gurjit has worked towards understanding in incorporating data and facilitating value creation for clients and the environment by means of data-driven solutions to better execute voyages. He, he holds a degree in economics and an MBA from HEC Montréal. Gurjit is as well a member of the Canadian Maritime Law Association. Our second speaker, Michael Rungvist, is professor at the Department of Mechanical Engineering at of Université Laval. He completed his PhD at Linköping University in Sweden and currently, currently holds a Canada Research Chair Tier 1 in Operations Research in Natural Resources. His research interests are in the, area, in the areas of industrial and practical use of analytics in operations research. He enjoys tackling challenging industrial problems and the development and implementation of innovative solutions, methodologies, and planning tools. He's been involved in the development of industrial decision support systems based on optimization in the areas of logistics, transportation, scheduling, routing, production planning, cutting, and process control. Michael is a member of the Canadian Quebec Research Organization Network's Forest to Customer, so FORAC, and the CIRAIT, which is the Inter-University Research Center on Enterprise Networks, Logistics, and Transportation. So now, without further ado, gentlemen, uh, the, the floor is yours. So uh, thank you. Uh, this is Mikael. Thank you, Fabian, for your uh, nice introduction. We are very happy to have you all here today to, to listen to our presentation. We have a, a full, full schedule for today and uh, we will uh, cover a number of cup, uh, topics. So our captain, uh, Gurit Varia, he will, he will start talking about uh, vessel routing in practice and, and true north uh, marine. And uh, next, uh, please, uh, Gurit. Uh, and thank you so much, Fabien, and good day to everybody. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I, I, I just wanted to have the next slide. Sorry. Okay. Yes, no problems. Uh, and, and I just wanted to thank everybody for, for attending. I know it's uh, different hemispheres right now and uh, different time zones. So really appreciate uh, for all of you attending over here. 
without wasting more time, I'll quickly run you through our uh, contents now. Uh, I, I would let uh, Mikhail go through this quickly. Yeah, so, so we'll start with, uh, we'll start talking about the, the vessel routing and True North Marine. And uh, I'll come back a bit on the collaboration project that we set up that started last year and will run for, for, the, for the next uh, two years. Uh, we have a number of uh, challenges in the project and I will touch uh, some of those, which includes the, the weather data, performance functions, the safety, uh, network route optimization, and we'll talk about the multi-objective part of the, the problem, and we'll finish off with some challenges and some concluding remarks. So over to you. Well, uh, to begin with, a uh, few words on True North Marine. We were founded in 2013, uh, Brian Hatter, with 25 plus years of experience in the industry. He, he founded True North Marine, and we are established in Montreal. We, we have a full-fledged operations center in, uh, in, in India as well. We, we have a big chunk of our staff as ex-seafarers or people who have worked in the weather routing industry uh, previously. And over these last eight years, we have quickly but uh, surely and steadily grown uh, to be a leading weather routing company. And, and I guess it is, uh, it's all got to do with the, our reputation to be accurate and unbiased in our assessments and advices to the clients. We, we are a traditional weather routing company, uh, but at the same time, we, we do other small projects for clients and, and we, we, we try to call ourselves bespoke weather routing. What we primarily do is we, we, we help both owners and, uh, and operators alike. And, and a few of our salient features would be uh, once we receive an order to follow a ship, we get in touch with the master and we, we send out uh, route recommendations. Uh, then we keep in touch with the master with the daily uh, or frequent uh, changes to route as needed uh, forecast keeping the clients updated at the same time with the vessel's performance or any other issues or uh, important uh, matters uh, through daily fleet reports or interim reports. And then there is your usual uh, final uh, performance report at the end of the voyage. We also assist our clients with the post-voyage dialogue supports uh, concerned if there's a claim. We, over the past few years, have uh, added a lot of other small parts to our services. Uh, we collect a lot of data and, and we, we use this to give uh, high level intelligence to clients uh, on request. Uh, we are actually very much involved in uh, emissions monitoring calculations and reporting. And we work with our clients to prepare their reports after monitoring their vessels for emissions. ETA calculations, special projects, for example, a tug uh, with a tow doing trans-oceanic voyages. Uh, we specialize in that too. And then uh, last but not the least, the marine legal consulting uh, with our in-house expertise in that. Now, the, the route optimization has become a buzzword of late, but, but let me remind you, it's not without a reason. Uh, the, the need for optimized routing has gained its relevance due to tightening emission regulations and, and safety issues concerned with voyages. And of course, we all know the fluctuating fuel costs. Uh, emission uh, standards have been changing. And at the end of the day, what it really matters for our, for our clients uh, is, is to, to be able to carry out these voyages in an optimal manner, not just to save dollars, but also to ensure that their cargo and their vessels have safely arrived at their, at their destination. So over the course of this presentation, we will look at our endeavor to bring to reality a project which is a, a tool, a decision support solution, which we wish to place in the hand of users to, to be able to make informed decisions and improve their time charter equivalence. So the, the, the various factors that go into playing uh, 
when you want to better your time charter equivalence. Many of them are, are openly known and being discussed, but in the end, what comes down to is the voyage optimization is something which comes from the, the, the which, which finds inspiration as to the objectives, the primary objective of a shipping company, which is to be cost competitive. And many elements they go about in achieving the final model uh, that we are working on. And I will list uh, a few of them over here. The ship being one of the most important ones. And we all know that the ship's engine power is, is the, the ship's performance is influenced by its engine power, as well as its calm water added resistance, which potentially leads to involuntary speed reductions, while voluntary speed reductions as well, which is primarily aimed to increase the safety uh, being carried on by the masters on board. So these constraints may refer to the maximum available engine power or to speed limitations, and also the heavy weather handling capabilities of the ship. There is the weather itself, which forms the, the, the primary component of this interaction. It can, be, it can be characterized as a constant or a stochastics, whereas the later are obtained by considering not only forecasted, but also the analyzed historical data, it is possible to have forecast errors. So therefore, constant weather conditions in contrast can refer either to the assumption of neither wind nor ocean currents or to the adoption of the forecasted data as true data for each location at that specific time of passing. In addition, uh, safety requirements such as maximum allowed wave heights or critical encounter periods and angles are crucial to avoid critical occurrences such as slamming, pounding, parametric rolling, and all those uh, features. And uh, finally, the greenhouse gases. So climate change is real, and we at TNM have been working towards helping reduce the carbon footprint of the ships in whatever capacity we could. It's, it's a passion uh, embedded in our foundation actually, and, and we made it a key goal to be part of this project. Uh, uh, we, will, we will later on uh, see more about how, how we are going about doing all of this. And, uh, and finally, I would like to touch upon another important aspect, which is the commercial constraints. We, we understand that for operators, uh, it is important that the speed and consumption warranties as agreed to in the charter parties are very important for identifying if there is a claim and then be able to also go ahead and present this claim. So we are not leaving here much to hoping that the ship performs well and there's not a claim and instead to, to create a, a kind of a tool which will give the power in your hands to be able to visualize where there is a possibility to be able to also insert your SNC warranties uh, and respect the commercial constraints. So the, the goal of optimization, then basically we can, we can summarize that being these four key elements, which is to ensure that the voyages are conducted safely and efficiently we are able to manage the times, just in time arrivals, uh, reduce voyage costs at sea and reduce carbon footprint uh, of the voyage overall. I'll, I'll hand it over to uh, Mikhail now uh, to, to take over the technical part of things. Yeah, thank you. So, so when I had the first meeting with Juliet, we, we looked at the problem and I thought that this is, shouldn't be a difficult problem. And, and many of you have done sort of shortest path problems in courses uh, earlier. But uh, as you understand from Juliet, there, there's, an, there's a need of deep knowledge and experience to, to route the individual vase, vessels, taking all the efficiency goals and safety aspects in, into, into account. So, so in, our, in our project, I view the, the academic research part as, a, as an approach to take all the experience from Guret's knowledge uh, into account and together with the data, really propose a good route uh, for, the, for TNM and, and, and the clients. So uh, next, please. So, so what we have done is we, 
we started a, a project uh, last year, an Evado uh, funded one. And uh, in that we, uh, together with uh, you know, other academic uh, people, uh, so especially Jean-Francois Audi from UQTR, Jean-Francois Cordoa from HSC and, uh, and myself, we together with TNM, we uh, applied for some funding. So we, we got funding, which uh, stretches uh, until uh, next year. And uh, we assembled a, a team of uh, postdocs, PhDs, uh, masters, uh, internships uh, to support us in doing a lot of the work together with the professionals uh, at TNM. So MyTechs typically sort of fund uh, HQP and, and prompt sort of uh, adds up on that and also sort of supports uh, research professionals that we have in the project. So you have all the list of the, the people involved in the project now. So, so we're not halfway through yet, but we are, we're on the way. So I'll, I'll sort of uh, go over to uh, Giriot again. Exciting part over here. Uh, a sneak peek into what you can expect from as, as the end product of, the, uh, of this project. So primarily as a user, what you would be doing is you would be selecting a ship. Now the ship could be from, uh, from the database or a digital sister ship as we call it, uh, more on that later. You input your itinerary, you input your estimated uh, time of departure, the ETD. You input your safety constraints. We will go in details on that later on. You, you input your voyage costs. And voila, you just press enter. You have your data crunching phase. And then you come out with the results. You, you, the user would have a multiple uh, proposal uh, route proposals, the optimized route. And at that stage, in the initial phases, our, our intention is to involve our analysts to work on those and then select the one that fulfills your requirements. Once we select one of those proposals, there is an, an as, as you see, a, a, a feedback loop of sorts, which goes about to feed the algorithm again and make it smarter and, and learn from why we chose a better route and what were the reasons behind choosing a particular route. I will uh, give the floor to uh, Mikhail again. Yeah, I think we're going to have our poll too now, Juliet. Uh, yes, actually, I did miss on that. Uh, we, we have actually prepared a very small poll, would take less than a minute of your time. Uh, if, uh, if I could allow Fabian to put it across, you will see it on your screen. All you have to do is uh, choose your best option that you see on that. I just uh, launched the report, so it should be printed on the, the screen of the, uh, of the participants. So I will leave it for a couple of minutes so you can carry on with the, uh, the presentation. Michael, I think uh, we yeah, should- Yeah, I will, I will continue here. So, so we have a number of things we need to go through. So one of the, the data we have, of course, the dynamic weather data. And uh, what we have available is uh, a, a forecast for the next uh, seven days. Uh, the forecast intervals for different type of weather is sort of for every three or four or six hours. And it typically sort of uh, for up to a, to a week. Uh, the, the, the main one we, we have sort of available is the winds, which we have in both directions and, and the speed. Uh, we have hurricanes. I will come back to that a bit later, but we have the, the wind speeds, uh, the directions. Uh, the same thing for, for currents, uh, atmospheric pressure. We have also sort of uh, all over the, the, the world. Um, all the weather data comes in uh, grid format. Uh, these are collected by a, a Norwegian um, company uh, provided to us. Uh, the hurricane information comes from uh, two other organizations. So, so this information is uh, updated on a three hour basis uh, uh, continuously. And, and we will see a uh, uh, an illustration in the movie here. So in, in this one, uh, this is the forecast for seven days in terms of the, the wind, uh, the direction, you can see that in the arrows. And uh, the, the more red color you have, the, the higher wind speeds you have. So, so this is uh, the, the information we have. So we need to, to take that into account. Uh, the, the second one here, it's uh, similar, but, but here we have the, the currents. So again, we have the, the speed and we have the direction. Uh, so so we, we, we will look a bit later on how detailed they are. And we also have the atmospheric pressure. So here you can see that it's not only on the, 
oceans, it's also on the, on the land here. But that's a, a additional information we have. Now, of course, this is a sort of some of the basis. Um, if we go to the vessel performance, we really need to look at the, the, the fuel consumption, route time, and, and the speed. Uh, this is an illustration of fuel consumption for different sized uh, vessels for, for different speeds. And of course, this is uh, the, the speed on, on calm water. And of course, this is affected by the, the weather, but also the, the engine setting. So that's something we need to take into account when we are doing the estimates on the route time and, and, and the fuel. So if we go further, uh, in order to, to get sort of uh, accurate uh, information about uh, the, the, the fuel consumption, we need uh, information where the vessels are. And you saw on the screen, you know, we have information about the location of all vessels but it, it needs to be complemented by additional. So we, we do have the noon reports. These are reports uh, that come from each of the vessels uh, every 24 hours and, and includes uh, additional information such as the, the, the fuel consumptions, uh, fuel remaining, uh, local weather, the RPM settings. So, so we have that. So together with the weather information, we know that the location uh, we can continue to, to sort of uh, find better approximations. So uh, if you go to the next, uh, please. Um, beside uh, this information, we also need some, some information about the vessel itself. So, so we have, for example, the, the size, the, the, the length, the, the breadth, the, the, the weight, the tonnage, uh, the, the draft. Uh, we also have like vessel engines, and of course, these are things we, we need in, in order to compute also the, the fuel consumptions, but also the, the safety issues that uh, Gurit will talk about uh, a, a bit later. So we have a, a number of data sets. Uh, as uh, Gurit was talking about before, we, we have a lot of information. So this is a, an, an example. So here you can see there is a trip from uh, uh, South America uh, to Japan. And in this case, we, we collected information about 280 vessels, which have a a similar characteristic. Uh, we have about almost 8,000 noon reports uh, in, in this uh, set of data. Uh, and we have the illustration of the map there. Uh, if we look at the fuel consumption, you will see that typically you would see that uh, fuel consumption can follow some, uh, some polynomials and, and we have an illustration here. But when we look at the, the, the fuel consumption uh, against the speed, you can see that it is really hard to see any clear tendency. Of course, uh, this depends also, of, of course, on the weather. So we are testing different approaches to, to find uh, better estimates. So, so this is an ongoing project where we test many different uh, aspects. Um, one of the, the issues with the, with the data is that some of the data is uh, entered manually. So we have some bias here. So, so in, in this picture at the top, uh, you can see that here's some fuel consumption which are entered manually in the noon report. And uh, this is just an example where we have a constant RPM. And there are some uh, unexpected sort of uh, fuel consumptions, uh, even if you, the, the, the speed of the vessels uh, or, and also when we consider the weather, that uh, doesn't make any sense. So, so we, we need to, to really sort of uh, clean our data so we have accurate data. And, and that's something we're doing. So if we go to a specific vessel, we can see a, a, a better a relationship between the, the fuel consumptions and the RPM. And uh, so here you see that it's a linear function more or less here. And of course, we, the weather will make it even better. Um, but of course, we, we really need uh, these accurate data. So, so what we are doing now, we are, are doing sort of a collection of more accurate data uh, for specific vessels that we can use to, to make more general also for us, uh, other vessel types or uh, individual uh, vessels. And if I so, may add on that, uh, we, we have been lucky that uh, we, uh, some of our partners have, have given us access to, to use a few of their ships uh, to act as our uh, test vessels. So we have uh, access to more accurate uh, uh, data. We are working together with them. Yeah, I think that uh, we're going to go to the, to the safety part now. Okay, safety, that's me. Uh, so we know that every captain ensures that the, the vessel fulfills the intact and damage stability requirements prior to sailing out. And for us, or for everybody concerned with this, stability in simple words is the ability of a ship to sail in waters without capsizing or being overturned. Uh, 
being, being neither too tender nor too stiff for crew comfort, lashings of cargo, and all those items. Uh, internal, despite the various internal and external uh, healing, listing moments being created. And a ship is stable when the net force and the net moments of these forces exactly cancel out according to the laws of vector analysis. So no route optimization that involves whether ship interaction can be devoid of this dynamic stability aspect. And for a dynamically stable ship, one big step is to ensure that the damage stability fulfillment requirement condition, everything is fulfilled at all times. We, we followed a certain methodology. This itself in is, in, it was a very big project within the main project, uh, the safety issue. And uh, the, the, our intention here was to assign a set of hard rules and soft rules based on the order of importance of safety factors. Uh, the, the intact stability uh, requirements uh, sh shall automatically fall under the hard rule that is a strict no-go, which would prompt the system to seek the route which complies with intact stability requirements at every instant of breaching the hard rule. While the soft rules shall allow the user to set uh, weightage for the, for the other safety factors, uh, which, which we take inspiration from the uh, Ishikawa model, and it's basically uh, covers all the safety aspects, the people, the crew comfort and all those items, the ship and cargo, the dynamical phenomena we just spoke about and the environment also, most of which is covered under actually the weather uh, component of this uh, project. And to, to sum up this vast topic, which is a project within itself, we, we can safely say that wind and waves are the primary elements that affect the dynamic ship stability. So the direction of the wind influences the wind pressure enormously and is the driver for wind healing angle and moments, which is the intersection of the ZZ curve and the wind lever. Wave uh, healing uh, moment functions based on time is, is what you're seeing over here on this uh, animation. And, and this shows the wave phases which gives us a pretty good idea of how significantly a huge body of water in the middle of the ocean, which is constantly pounding upon the vessel can have on its stability, the effect it can have. So what is critical is the direction of the ship between these two crests and equivalent pressure points uh, due to this big uh, uh, body of water. While the maximum healing can be anticipated taking the waves on the beam, what cannot be neglected are the longitudinal and transversal uh, stresses, which arise from such immense hydrostatic pressures. And in the long run, uh, for all technical uh, and, and naval people, they would understand the, the effects of these uh, stresses which build up over time on, on the ship's hulls and frames. So we had to thus include the, 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 the factor of uh, sharing forces and bending moments as well. Uh, I would uh, hand over to uh, Mikhail, but I think I have something else to add. Uh, uh, okay, so, so th th this was an, another of my favorites uh, and it directly relates to our model. So what lies beneath is what worries us, honestly. And, and the, the iceberg model is the best depiction of that. So while the external factors are all too readily identified, uh, experience has shown that optimization is a much complex uh, exercise, given it involves a wide area of interaction between the external and the internal factors. And these internal factors are what we have focused our attention on simply because they have not been gone to such depths in when looking at an optimization model. Uh, ship design, weather patterns, and all those other factors which remain hidden to the naked eye uh, of, of a normal operator are, are what form part of this uh, consideration in our project. Uh, I think, yes, this is where Mikhail takes over. 
Yeah, so we, we talked about some of the, the, the dynamic aspects from the weather, but there's also some static uh, characteristics we need to, to look at. So, so here's a view of the, the routes and the spread all over the oceans. But of course, there are some preference, you know, there are some routes that should avoid some certain sort of uh, fields like gas fields, uh, etc., or islands. Uh, we, we have the, you know, special uh, sort of emission zones that we need to consider because they, they give rise to different uh, costs because of the use of fuels. Um, in, in some parts, uh, you might not need pilots, but there are some preference in which lanes to use, uh, you know, besides certain uh, cities or, or, or islands. Um, we also have routing uh, uh, where we need the pilots. Uh, so this is a Magellan Straits. Uh, and uh, so in these cases, we, we need to follow very specific, uh, you know, geographical sort of uh, routes. And, and those could be quite hard to, to, to follow. Uh, yeah, if you, the next one. Uh, it could also be that uh, when we are, are going sort of uh, from and to specific ports, there might be some very sort of uh, restricted uh, lanes uh, with the bridges or, or cables, uh, you know, and, and we need to be able to handle that. So when we look at the, the optimization, there are a number of decisions that we need to take. So, so many of you know about sort of network optimization routing, but essentially what we need to do is we need to select the, the, the arcs themselves so we get the physical uh, route. Uh, for, for those uh, arcs, we also need to determine the, the RPM setting or the speed setting. Uh, what's really important here, which really makes the, the network much larger, is that if we traverse the same physical arc, but at different times, uh, of course, the weather will be different, so they, are, they impact the vessel different. So when we transfer an arc, the, the time to actually go through that will depend on the vessel's uh, the speed setting and the, the weather. So, so you have a, a, another dimension, which is a time dimension that you don't see. So we can go to the, to the next one. So what we have done in the project, we, we developed the first uh, prototype that we uh, use uh, QGS, which is ge ge well, Geographic Information System to do some testing. And, uh, and this is a, a simple example. It's from uh, South America to uh, Singapore. Uh, just to, to give an indication of, of the cost, we, we can see here that, that this route uh, takes uh, you know more than 20 days. Uh, it consumes you know more than 900, what, around 900 tons of fuel, and you can see that the, the cost for this is, is is of course very high. So if you're not familiar with that, you realize that uh, you know that there's a lot of costs uh, involved in this. So there, there, there are a lot of savings here. So the blue one here, that's a what we call the, a preferred path. What we can do, depending on if there are some restriction, is to put like corridors around that to, to limit how the, the route should be around islands, for example. And, and here is actually a, a picture of all the arcs. Now, there are so many, so, so it looks like they are painted. And, and here are the, the, the nodes for the, the corresponding here. Now, when we are, are doing, looking at the more zoomed in version, you can, you can actually see the nodes and the arcs. And, and of course, you understand for each of those arcs, we need to be able to compute the, the arc cost and the arc time. And, and, and there are many of those arcs. So if we look at some of the, the challenges, we can see that this specific one, it, it takes more than 20 days. Uh, to represent this one, we need about you know, almost 6,000 nodes, uh, just the physical one. And then I talk about this time expansion. So, so uh, many, many time nodes to, to deal with this. Uh, you can see that there are more than 4 million arcs to, to represent this accurately. Uh, to generate this network in the QGIS, it, it's about 13 seconds on a standard laptop. Uh, the actual optimization is really fast. Uh, the reason why we can do this, uh, this fast is that we really sort of uh, take into account uh, special uh, handling of the data in order to do the computation. I'll, I'll mention uh, a bit more later on. So, but this is, uh, this is sort of the, 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 the optimization part. Um, if we continue, uh, we also have, uh, in this case, we can see that this is going from, uh, you know, uh, essentially Argentina down to, well, go to Santiago around uh, uh, the, the Cape Horn. Uh, so if we, this is a preferred with the corridors. Now, if we look at the, uh, an optimized uh, route here, so if we go to the next slide, so you can see that the red one here, that is the, the optimized going around Cape Horn. We know that the, the weather could be very bad there, uh, around there. So, 
there is actually a, a, like a bit of a shortcut. So if we go to, to the next one. Yeah, so, so here there's a shortcut and there's a Magellan Straits. So, so here you, you really need a pilot to go through there. There's a cost associated with that. Uh, the speed, the specific speed setting. So here you have this indication in, in the green one here. And um, if we look at the more uh, zoomed version of this one, you can, you can really see that, um, if we go to the next slide, uh, you can really see that uh, it follows the, 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 the detail and the contour, of course, of where it's possible to go. And now, because we need to generate the network uh, automatically each time, uh, this type of structures is really hard to, to, to implement. So we need to generate them uh, a priori. But of course, it has a big sort of advantage. So, so here we can see that if we use uh, this, uh, uh, this opportunity, we can see that the time goes down, the fuel goes down. Of course, it has to be balanced against the, the pilot cost. But uh, because this is set in, the, in, the, in our prototype, we can, we can do this weighting easily. So, so it's an easy way for, for anyone to do this uh, analysis. Of course, there are also other parts which have a similar when we need the, the pilot. So this is a, a picture of the, the, the part of the Panama Canal. And, and what we do in the optimization is that we, we do create a, a, a network for all these uh, channels where we need pilots, also where we, we have very specific rules how to go. And then when we go find a route uh, from a you know, particular point to another one, we, we merge two of the networks. So we have our sort of the one we construct dynamically and together with the, the one with the channels. So, and this is just an illustration. So here we have the emission control zones again. We're gonna focus a bit on the North Europe one. So you have the, the definition here. Um, when we use our system, it, it looks like this. So this is following the, the, the definition of the zones. So if we would uh, take a look at the trip here, we go, will go from uh, Reykjavik in Iceland to Bergen in, in Norway. And in this case, we, we, uh, we don't have any specific weight on the fuel, so we, we balance them in, in the equal way. So we can see that we're gonna route uh, inside uh, the emission zone in this case. Now, if we would, would just sort of put a higher priority or higher cost on the, on the low sulfur fuel, uh, we will see that, uh, of course, we will take a, a, another route. So, so if we look at that one, you can see that we are essentially sort of uh, traveling sort of uh, very close to the zone in order to sort of uh, save some of the cost uh, if, if that's sort of the, the preference uh, we have. So, so and, and if we continue, uh, so this is what with, the, with the zones. Now, one of the things I mentioned before is that the, the weather data comes in different quality and uh, the, the weather information also comes with information that makes it possible for us to identify, for example, islands. Now, in, in the grid files, so, so this is uh, the information that comes from the wind and then the waves. And you can see that the, the raster quality is uh, about one by one degree. So it's very small and, 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 and it's very hard to identify uh, islands. Now, if we look at the, the quality of the one for the, the currents, you can see that it's much more uh, fine, which means that it's much easier to identify the, the, the different islands. So, so that's a good thing for us. Now, this is an example, you know, so when we have one of those arcs, so this is represented by the blue arc here. So in, in the left side, you know, we can see that we, we pass essentially uh, three different uh, uh, zones and in the other one, we are passing many, many more. So this is a same illustration here. And uh, what I wanted to, to comment here is that when we are computing the arc cost, so for every arc that the 4 million, we need to see you know, which of these uh, zones we are passing because each of those zones pick up uh, the, the, the weather quality there. And we need to use that in order to compute the, the, the fuel consumption, the, the route time, uh, et cetera. And, and here's also, of course, just an illustration that when we are going on each of those arcs, depending on the speed settings and the actual time when we go, there will be a different arc representing that. So just to, to show the, the explosion in dimensions here and that. So, so here is a, just a, a bit of an illustration here. So, so we, we assume that we, we're going with the vessel here and, uh, and uh, yeah, if we go, this is the first picture here. This is a, a situation where we, 
where we put really sort of a low weight on the on the weather, and especially in this case in the in the hurricane. Um, so in in this case, uh, you can see that this is was the the, the optimized route when we do not look at the uh, the actual sort of in this case the, the the typhoon, and you can see that here they would create a, a, a very dangerous situation because the, the vessel would be routed straight through that. So because we have this information, if we go to this one, you can see that here we actually follow the, the rules, you know, the, the distance to the center and, and depending on the, of course, the, the wind speeds, uh, that the green one here actually goes a bit slower in the beginning. So it goes really on the, on the backside of the, the bad weather. And, and then it will sort of uh, turn up north. So of course, this one will follow the, the safety guidelines and it's possible to do a different weighting. Now for the, the hurricanes, uh, they are a bit uh, special because uh, normally with, uh, with the information, we only had the wind, uh, but from these, uh, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, we do have information about the hurricane. So, so the information that comes is of course, the, the location of the hurricanes. And this is for every three hours. And for each hurricane and for every three hours, we, we have the, uh, the wind speeds or the different category storm. Uh, so indicated in the picture to the right. So, so red is, uh, I believe in this case, it's a, a category three and then two and then one. And we have the, the wind speeds and, and how far they, they, they reach out in the four different uh, directions. So all this information is given, like I said, on a three hour basis. So, so again here, just to, to, to illustrate. So in the left one here, you see that the vessel, and in this case, we don't use the information from the, from the hurricane. And on the right, you can see uh, when we do that. So, so the red zone here is the, the actual hurricane. And this is the one where we are not allowed to go. So we need to be uh, at least 200 nautical miles uh, uh, ahead uh, or 130 behind. Uh, the pink zone is more a zone where we are allowed to go but we put some penalties. So, so we, we want to avoid being there if possible, but it's, it's not, it's like a soft constraint. And, and you can see that, that the green one here, we really sort of uh, make sure we, we do not sort of uh, uh, go too close to the hurricane center and, and according to the guidelines. And, and it takes a bit longer, but of course it's, it's, it's a much safer one here. So. Well, as you see now, we can already take care of our ships and keep them away from harm's way. Uh, we, this, this, this is um, a very special diagram illustration, I would say, because we are literally trying to reinvent the balance here. And if you notice, this one has three arms and we find them essential to our project and to any project of route optimization. Uh, the safety, the time constraint and the cost factor, none of them can be ignored. Our aim in this project was first to identify them and then to isolate these functionalities, study them in isolation, and then go back and combine them all again to, to find an intelligent route optimization solution towards designing a multi-objective model. Now, the efficient route requires a deep understanding of the interplay between fuel consumption, vessel speed, and safety, depending on the weather. Thus, vessel routes should also be balanced uh, for, for the operational costs fuel and greenhouse gas emissions cost and uh, weather related safety issues. So we would like to call it the next generation digital solution for route optimization. I know it's a long name, but that's our slogan, I would say. And, and we do this by using decades of experience and data. Next, uh, Mikhail will give you an insight in the practical planning process and analytics tool developed so far to support the planners. Yeah, so, so what we have in, in the multi-objective, we, we do have the different cost aspects and, and we need to find some weights on, on each of those to, for the, 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 the balancing. So of course, you know, when we look at the fuel, the time, we can really easily put some weights. Uh, the, the safety is a bit uh, more complicated in terms of uh, optimization because uh, we, we, of course, we have one part which is our, the hard constraint rules we, we must follow. And then we have soft constraints that we, we want to follow, but not necessarily. So, so my example, I, I mentioned that with the hurricane. So we know that we, you know, if we look at, the, we need to be at least 200 nautical miles uh, ahead of a hurricane, which means that 200 on the borderline is okay. 200 one is okay. 300 is of course okay. But of course there's a preference to be 
you know, 250 rather than 201. So what we do is we have these, uh, some weighting we can put there to, to balance that. So in our, in our sort of vessel route optimization at the moment, we really have sort of three categories. So if you look to the left, we really have sort of, we can put the weight on the time, the fuel. So of course that can represent, you know, hourly cost or uh, fuel cost per, per ton, because we, we do compute the, the, the consumption and, and of course the time. And then we have the, the safety. The safety uh, is of course a bit more complicated because then we need to also to find the relative weights against the, the hurricane, the, the pressure, the waves, the, the stability. And of course here we, we are adding on more of these uh, aspects uh, as we go in the project. Uh, but this is what we can do. And of course, um, in the optimizer, we can follow up on each of those aspects. Now, of course, there, there, are, there might be many solutions. So they are indicated here by the, by the blue one. But when we put the uh, specific weights, we essentially create uh, uh, solutions which are called uh, the Pareto optimal solutions. So each, uh, you know, each part of those uh, frontier has some certain characteristics. So in this case, you can see that the top left is more the, the vessels going faster with a higher fuel consumptions or to the right, more the you know, slower and, and, and lower fuel consumption. So depending on the, on the client and the needs, uh, of course, there will be focus to generate a, a few routes uh, in, in that category. And of course, that can be more evaluated before the, the right proposals are, are sent back. So if we go to the, to the next one, we're gonna talk a bit more on the, on the challenges and then the further development. So I think it's over to you, Gerrit, now. Right, Mikhail. Um, so with every great objective, it brings its own fair share of challenges. And, and we have not been immune from that. We, we have identified a lot. We have overcome a few, and we are still working on many of them. And we are certain that we will get over them. Uh, what, what we are trying to build here is a database product, not a simple trading tool, we are, we are trying to solve something from the first principle. And the fact is when you're doing something like that, you are pushed back 99% of the time, but that doesn't deter us. Uh, and the simple reason for this is there's no precedent because as you have seen, we have tried to use a lot of practicality in our approach and, and not just create a, a glamorous tool uh, which looks great, but doesn't address the practical aspects of a day-to-day operation of a ship. Our, 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 among our challenges, I, I would say a few worth mentioning, we are short on the time, so I will run quick through this, is uh, data is one of them. And our primary source is the noon report from the ships, the, the traditional manner. We are still you know, in the age of <laughs> ships not being fitted with adequate sensors to automatically collect data. And even if they are, uh, not all charters might have access to it. There is the, the availability and the quality of data. There is, there, there, there is the, the question of the human bias in the data. There is also the, the cost associated with this data and, and the cost of using multiple data sources and distribution of these costs given the slim margins as we all know. So we have to ask ourselves these questions that is the acquisition cost of this data justified or not? Uh, to sum it up as a solution, our model will employ vessel uh, dynamic position updates via publicly available uh, AIS, uh, the satellite data of ships, uh, ships noon reports and uh, data from fixed onboard uh, sensors as and when and where available. Uh, use all of this data, clean it and use the best one. Uh, then there are the contractual obligations, which uh, we have spoken about uh, earlier and and uh, the moment you start optimizing your voyage and you start forgetting about your SNC uh, warranties, speed and consumption warranties, you are effectively letting go your chances of optimizing your time charter equivalent to the, to the, to the real essence of it. Then there's the variability in ship profile. Not every ship is same and therefore they will not react the same way to the weather. And how do you overcome this? So for us, what we have done is we have created digital sister ships, models of all the ships in various categories and subcategories. So far, we have uh, such sister ship uh, digital models available for all the 16 
or maybe 14 uh, subcategories to be, uh, to be correct uh, of uh, bulk carriers and general cargo ships. And over time, as more data pours in and, and we move forward with the project, our intention is to start adding profiles for uh, containers, for tankers, for LNG, and all the other kind of uh, vessel types out there. So, so what Gurit was talking about now, of course, uh, we can sort of represent that in, in various sort of uh, academic challenges or, or you know, products in themselves. I will not go through this list, but this is really a list, uh, you know, doing a, you know, a translation of what Gurit was talking about, but more on the academic side. So, so if, we, if we continue to the next slide. So just to position a bit uh, where the different modules are, uh, this is a, a, a figure often used. So analytics is defined as a scientific process of transforming data into insights to make better decisions. So, so what you have here is, uh, you know, in some way, as you go to the right, uh, there, there are more advanced uh, methodology. Uh, to the left is more simple one. And, and, and typically you have these four uh, analytics classes and, and they each, you know, answer, you know, a, a typical question. Now, if we position ourselves here, we can see that performance functions are more the diagnostic analytics, uh, the route optimization more predictive, and the way we look at the more multi-objective is more the prescriptive. And of course, when we put these together into one system, we, we, we have the sort of, we call the TM decision analysis tool. Uh, of course, that's sort of a, you know, at the, at the top of, of this one here. So if we continue to the next one. So if we have done our job good now, that means that we, we can really sort of describe the performance of the vessels. We can do our route optimization. So, so what we can do now is we can use this concept that's called a digital twin. So, so what we have with all our, our description, we can really sort of describe uh, the, the actual performance of a vessel in our digital sort of uh, version, which means that we can do a lot of simulations, uh, anal analysis and testing, and testing a lot of different routes, alternatives, and, and do a sort of, uh, uh, analysis of that. And of course we can do that before we, we put it back uh, as a proposal for the, for the captain itself. So, so we're gonna just make some, some concluding remarks here. So, so this is a bit of a vision. So, so the, the project what we want to do is we, we really sort of want to create, uh, if you heard about the, the concept of, uh, of decision, decision theater. And uh, decision theater is, is sort of, a, in this case, a virtual room where the different stakeholders can meet uh, you have a lot of transparency. Uh, what you have is you have the users' clients, which have uh, specific goals and restrictions. Uh, we have the, the captain that is going to sort of uh, run the, the, the ship and also have local information on the, the vessel settings and, and, and local weather. And of course, we also have the analyst team that, that have uh, access to the, the dynamic weather information, uh, vessel you know, characteristic, and, and can sort of uh, find these uh, route alternatives. And then this can be sort of sent back and forward between all of them in a transparent way. So, so this is the way we, we, we view the, the way to go forward. So, so with that, I, I will conclude and, 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 if, and leave the final to Gary. And if I, if, I would, uh, if I were to add to this particular illustration, to, to, to be very clear, this was absolutely uh, Mikhail's brainchild. And, and it, I, I believe it emanates from the various discussions we have had over the last year or so on this project. So this gives you a sense of things that, that are to come, that this is a solution which has been envisioned and created from the principle of uh, inclusivity. In other words, it will involve the interest of all stakeholders in this venture, the, the client, the, the end user, the, the, the PNM analyst team, the ship itself providing all the data. And, and then uh, we have the ship's captain uh, with whom we will be able to work this out. Uh, with this, I will conclude, and uh, maybe we can have the the question and answer session, and at the same time, put up the the results of the small poll that we did somewhere in the middle. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, thank you for the really uh, interesting presentation. So, yeah, we already have a couple of questions coming in, and I can share the results of the of the poll. So many, many attendees uh, answered the poll. Uh, can you see it on your screen on your side? Yeah. Interesting. So, so it's pretty clear that we are on the, on the a, a, a clear, yeah, a clear, clear results as a, of an, an, an 
answer number two is uh, clearly uh, the winner of the of the poll. <laughs> yes, absolutely. All right. Um, so, so we can move over to the questions. Yeah, and we answers. can start uh, to taking the first questions. We still have a couple of minutes. Okay, I will stop the share results and uh, Georgette and uh, Mikhail will send you the results of the of the poll afterwards. So, first question. So, um, uh, so could you please elaborate on, on how the computation time was less than a minute? Yeah, I guess that's uh, that's my question. So, so uh, when you have these uh, huge networks. Uh, uh, a lot of the, the problem is to, of course, to compute uh, the actual arc cost and, and put it together. And, and when doing that, if you would sort of uh, do a, a pretty straightforward, which you would read in, in, the, in the textbooks, it, it will take a long, long time. But when you have done this many times, you, you really need to, to explore the, the actual sort of network, how you configure it. Uh, and, and, and also, you know, how the computations are done. So for example, because we know that for each of the physical arcs, I mentioned that, um, we really need to, to do the computations for every arc. And a lot of the, the time is that for each arc, it passes many of those uh, zones where we have weather information. And, and to identify the zones in these uh, grab files, it, it would take just too long time. So what we do is we do some pre-processing of the, 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 the grab files. So when we have computed our cost for one arc, we know exactly which of those zones we're actually passing. So when we are computing the, the arc cost for the same arc, but different time versions of it, which are many, many, uh, we know where to search. So, so it's really a, a clever way to, to sort of uh, set up the, how the computations uh, are, are to be done. So, so uh, I think that it probably we can, we can squeeze that even more, but I think that we are within sort of practical limits. And, and you saw that the, the network, I, I show one which is really a long route, like 20 days, and, and it's like 4 million arcs. But uh, once we have the network, the optimization is extremely fast. So, so that we are using, um, for those who are familiar, but we use a, a special ver version of the extra with some, uh, some bucket, uh, buckets, uh, it's sort of more technical, but, but it's, it's, it's really fast. So, so, but the, most of the, the, the development is actually on uh, generating the network. Okay, thank you, Mikhail. Um, uh, next. Yeah, I, I have a question here on the currents. Uh, sorry if yep. I missed, but do you take uh, currents into account? Uh, following some currents could help go faster and use less fuel. Uh, in fact, yes, thank you for the question. Yes, we do actually. And this is probably we ran through everything very fast given the paucity of time, but uh, currents do form a very important part and uh, the project will, uh, the, the solution will take into account running on favorable current streams. Something uh, for, for clarity's sake is something we already do uh, in, in our voyage estimations right now and in our uh, optimization that we are doing in-house presently without this, uh, without this solution as well. Kyle, do you have another question for yourselves? Um, yep, so another question. So uh, have you considered to use a, a CFD simulation to estimate the vessel performance? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what, what that means uh, in this case. Uh, uh, in, in our case, we, we, we don't look at sort of a simulation to estimate. What we do, we want to look at sort of a specific vessel. So we, we rather look at the actual data from the vessels uh, because we know that, that that would be a better representation. So, so we're really using the, each uh, vessel's uh, own data together with uh, the weather information on the routes they have been taken in order to, to do that estimation. So, but, but here, of course, there, there are many different approaches, but the, that's the one we, uh, we have chosen to, to do. Okay. Thank you, Mikhail. So if I may, I mean, I would like to ask a question myself. Um, the maritime sector is uh, generally known to, for being slow towards the adoption of technology. And uh, how does it impact your plans and what you're doing to overcome the, this barrier? Well, I, I would say it's not a secret that the, that the maritime sector has been reluctant to embrace technology. It's, it, it, it's a known fact, let's say. Uh, so while shipping leaders, they, they have over the years, they understand the relevance of technology, the adoption of digitalization is mostly as a reactive approach so far. 
And, and this could be due to many reasons. Uh, if I could say one of the factors to my knowledge is the closely knit industry, the way it works with its networks and, 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 and a big component of trust. So, so, so that, that forms a kind of a barrier for too much uh, digitization. Uh, for us, how do we differentiate ourselves is given TNM has a long collective experience with almost every aspect of this industry. Uh, our, our, our stakeholders, our partners come from all fields, uh, from, from, from operations to legal and including the weather expertise. So we took a very different approach from the early on. Instead of uh, you know, landing suddenly with a very digitized tool, we chose instead from the very beginning to focus on a digital transformation of sorts. And this we, we realized we could achieve by means of digitalization of the processes within the entire supply chain the, of, of the voyage. So we are, we are not trying to change everything in one go because we know this in, this industry from inside out, literally. And we know that this would fail after the initial euphoria wears off. Uh, we are trying to address the real concerns of these operators. And, and this is by talking to our clients again and again and understanding their real problems. Uh, and then we are looking to revolve our entire focus around these operational costs, these fuel costs, these market volatility and the cargo and vessel safety. And of course, not to forget the regulatory compliances. And all of this, you must have seen, we have touched upon in our presentation being various pillars of, of this project. So, so I, I, I would like to finish it by saying that we want to do this while continuing with the traditional weather routing practices. So it so has to make a complete end-to-end -end solution for our clients. And, 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 and I think this is what differentiates us from the competition. Thank you. Uh, so we can take another question. Uh, so, uh, so you specialize in dockers and your presentation centers around them. So what are your plans to include the, the other ships uh, types as well? Uh, I, I think I briefly mentioned that earlier that when we were uh, talking about the digital uh, sister ships and, and for now we are specializing in bulkers because we have just data, so much of data around bulkers, we understand them inside out. And that's what we are creating our sister ship profiles on. Uh, going forward, I believe within this project, we will have more time and resources to allocate to start working on uh, other ship types, uh, containers, be it LNG, tankers. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we have many, many questions. So another question uh, this time regarding the fuel. So uh, how, do, uh, how often do regulations regarding fuel sulfur content change? And how will these solutions stay up to date with such new requirements? We, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah Michael, go ahead because Michael. No, no, no. I, I, I think that uh, I think that uh, I, I don't know how often they they they, they change, but uh, I saw some. Uh, so you know, every year there's typically some change or some addition of zones. So, so in our case, they, they, that's not an issue at all because if there would be a new zone, we we put that as another information uh, field in our in for, for us where we know in this zone there's a certain sort of uh, type of fuel. So, uh, I mean, as soon as there, there's a new zone defined, we can easily integrate that. Uh, and then, of course, if different clients have different weighting on that, yeah, we, we can put it out. So, so that's a that's a very easy one for us to do. Yes, absolutely. And we have already discussed this in-house. So we try to stay updated on uh, future uh, regulations coming in, especially with emissions is happening very fast. And, and that's how it, it's already uh, planned to, to take care of that. There's one question I would like to, uh, I, I'd like to answer because I didn't get to talk more about it. Uh, it says you talked about challenges around contractual obligations. Uh, and can you elaborate more on this, especially given uh, no other uh, optimization software in the market takes this into account? And, and the reason I want to address this is that do we do actually have in our project the, the element of uh, contractual obligations. And these are the, the, the SNC warranties I was talking about, uh, looking at the CP. And how, how our challenge is right now is to to, to find the right balance, how we put it into action. 
but if I can give you an overview of our intention is to do an initial planning of the route with this uh, optimized software, uh, route optimizer, sorry. And, and, and then during periods of calm, go about to start testing the vessel for its SNC warranties as well. And, and try to find out that is, is, the, is the CP uh, obligations also respected or not for this particular voyage and ship. Okay, thank you. I, I, I saw a question here. It was about the, the forecasting period, uh, you know, because uh, some routes are more than uh, 20 days and the forecast is seven days. So I, I wanted to comment on that because there are different uh, ways to, to deal with that. So one, of course, is to say that, well, after seven days, we, we know nothing or we could compute some, uh, some typical state uh, for that zone uh, in the world of, uh, in, in that season. So that's another one. <clears throat> but you also need to remember that what we do is we, we do a road proposal. So of course, you know, us that uh, every day because of the noon reports, there is an opportunity to change the route. So, so it's not like they're gonna be a fixed for 27 days. It might change dynamically as more information is, uh, is coming. But we're looking at different ways of how to do a bit of sort of better prediction, especially for the route time for the, for the time sort of which are outside the forecasting period. So, and I, I, because me, I'm, I'm more in optimization. So there was one question here about, uh, it seems to be a customized uh, heuristic. So, so what we do is when we have created our network, uh, the solution we get from the network is optimal. That, that's sort of uh, guaranteed optimal. Uh, in, in terms of heuristic, uh, when we generate the network, yeah, we have some uh, you know, uh, heuristic approaches in the way that we have certain length of the arcs or a certain number of nodes, how we stretch out. But that's sort of a setting we have in our configuration files. So we can do more detailed or less detailed. So, so, and we're doing some experiments to see you know, where that is. But giving the network, we, we, we do have optimal solutions. Okay, thank you, Michael. Uh, we previously had a question about how you can take into uh, account the, the current of the sea. And now, what about the, the ice and the iceberg's movement? Is this a way to, uh, to take this into account as well in the route planning of the, of the ships? I, I will leave the question to Guri because in this case, we, we, something we, we started to talk about, we, we haven't implemented yet. So, so I, I need Guriot's sort of uh, insights for that before we do this implementation. So Guriot, please uh, answer yeah. you know, how, how you do it now. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. No, we, we will, we will uh, the, the solution will uh, factor in the ice and, and icebergs. And, and, and again, as I said that it is part of our daily operations already. So we avoid the INL limits. We, we keep vessels out of uh, iceberg prone areas. So we are doing all of that and we have that information and the final solution will have that. The, the only, the only uh, it's not related to this question, but again, related to whether uh, that, would be, that would be part of it is we are looking to work with pressure now. And this is our latest uh, uh, item for whether that we're considering. So this is challenging because we are trying to look at the, the surface uh, air pressure at the 500 millibars. And this we all know is one of the most pristine uh, uh, charts to look at to, to decipher the weather going in the future. And we are looking how to incorporate this information for our project as well. So ice, yes, uh, rest assured will be covered also. Yeah, and, and yes, to, to, to comment here because uh, in our, what we do now is we, we talked about, we have different sort of uh, safety aspects. And uh, because in the grip files, there are also information about uh, where the, the ice is located. So, so what we do is we, we, we essentially find uh, uh, like a penalty weight for being in a zone where we have those uh, ice uh, locations. And, and then we can sort of include it as a safety issue. So that, that would be the way. We haven't done it yet, but that, that would be the natural way to include that also in the, in the routing. Okay, so maybe we can take one last question. Uh, so there is a question about, I would say, I think it's related to the, uh, the cost of carbon emissions. So uh, what would I think, well, how much would it cost and uh, what would be the impact on the cost in, uh, in the international sea? I would say that's a very good question. And uh, I don't have an answer to that 
specifically what is the cost of uh, a, a carbon emission at sea uh, they are there are many many concerted efforts going on at this moment uh, at all levels to to wide to, to first of all to bring down the emissions and and one of them there is also talks of a carbon swap of kinds so at that instant we will be really be able to put a finger on and say okay this is the cost of your uh, your carbon emission we do now uh, calculate already as i said uh, as part of our uh, of our business uh, emission uh, monitoring and control and and we have statistics we have data of how much a particular voyage uh, brings in uh, the amount of co2 or the particulate matters or or the nox and the sox and 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 we have a very interesting uh, component uh, in the industry called the eeoi and eedi which is basically a way to assign a benchmark and it it in simple terms it is the amount of co2 that has been emitted while transporting a certain uh, one metric ton of cargo or one nautical mile so that's a kind of an indicator that is being uh, followed by everybody now and yeah I, i guess i i somewhat answered your question on that mm-hmm. okay okay so by thank you very much uh, gorjit and uh, nikai for this uh, really uh, inspiring presentation uh, about uh, how to use these analytics tools for the uh, the road planning of the ocean going vessels and uh, so i think this session is coming to an end uh, so thank you uh, all the participants uh, for attending uh, this uh, this webinar thank you as well for your questions and uh, answering the poll so thank you again michael and gorgit and uh, so i wish you everybody a very good day and i hope to see you soon on the uh, on very soon on the next uh, Ivado webinar session thank you thank you very much thank you bye bye